appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you to the groups that did that. Oh, of course. I was, watching them. I was watching them that day, Dr. Zorch, and they were so motivated yeah. that they were going up into the field by Lowe's and Walmart to clean up that area, too. <laughs> and, and we had to call them back and tell them, that's not ours, that's private property. <laughs> but, uh, but they were pretty motivated. Uh, our officers were out uh, with the police cars making sure that they were safe. So it's, I a great, it's a great thing. I mean, you know, to get be involved in your community any way you can, you know, it's a testament to the community, but also a testament to the people that think enough of the community to make it nice. You know, and that's just a small step for being involved in your community. You know, it fosters that kind of uh, involvement for the future. It's a great thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, Appreciate cool. it. Okay, another year is coming mm -hmm. very quickly, and unfortunately, we're going to be saying goodbye to our two students. Uh, Mr. Certificate for each of them and a little token of our appreciation because they did such a wonderful job. We were so happy. To them. district's in very good hands and that it's filled with people who actually care and are looking to get better students, their, the faculty, the best opportunities they can. So just thank you for the opportunity to be with all of you. Thank 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 you. That allows it to go on like a day to day basis. It's really interesting. It was just such a cool opportunity for us to be here. Um, so we thank you guys for just allowing us to take part in everything you guys do. We're really thankful for all the work you guys do to just make sure our school can run properly throughout the day to day because we don't really realize how much goes into everything we do. You know, whenever we just walk in the doors in the morning and leave at 3 o'clock, you know, we don't expect. Too much stuff to be happening other than that, but you guys really showed us that there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, and we're really thankful that you guys take care of it all for us. Thank you. Just remember, you don't have to be stranger. You can come back and do this. Make sure we can pull Do you want to get a picture? That would be great. Okay, can we get it for you guys? Do you want to get up again? Mrs. May, do you want to get a picture? No, go ahead. Honestly, I'll help you can. Yeah. Well, how do you want us? It's great. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for the nice little Of course. Thank you. I just didn't sit down. 
Bonnie, well, it's your turn at the, uh, the podium now. You've got to come up there and stand up, too. Um, it's always fun. Bonnie Grumbine is the EWCTC Student of the Month. And I, I wanted Bonnie to come and, and be recognized by the Board of Education tonight, as we do with our other EWCTC Students of the Month. But I, want to, I was at uh, the GOC meeting the night that she was recognized, and I want to read to you some of the things that Mr. Campbell uh, spoke about and some comments from her, uh, her teacher, Mrs. Youngstead. Uh, a senior from Greater Latrobe, cosmetology, right? You correct me now if I get any of this wrong, okay? And I thought this is one of the most interesting write-ups uh, that we've had of a student. I'm glad that you're here. Lonnie was born to be a cosmetologist braiding her Barbies at a very young age, right? Yes. Um, which is interesting, in your native Haiti. Is that correct? Yes. Um, uh, at the age of three. Now, she's enjoyed in makeup sessions and applications, and if I remember correctly, parents have been a part of these sessions? Absolutely, right? <laughs> um, but uh, what, I, what I think is interesting about Bonnie is that she's on like the special effects side of things. Um, and you enjoy the special effects? Yes, I do. Okay, now where are you going? And I already know this, but where, where are you going post EWCTC and graduation? I'm going to Douglas Education Center for special effects makeup. Okay, so the first time I had heard about Douglas, what did you call it again? Douglas Education, Education Center. Center was when Vanya talked about her, her future goals. <laughs> We had a career fair at the high school last week that was set up by Mrs. Yetter and the career, uh, the Next Pathways uh, coordinator system. Um, and guess who was there? It was the Douglas Center, right? So I walked over to the table and I said, I had never heard about this center. And here we are, like within two weeks, I hear about it and we have a student going. So I thought that was awesome. Um, you're earning your nail license this year? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, I want to tell you what Mrs. Youngstead said. Vanya always comes to class with a positive attitude and a willingness to help others. She excels in the nail and hair color curriculum and constantly puts forth her best effort to succeed academically. Um, once she's earned both nail and full Cosmo licenses, again, she's going to the Douglas Education Center and you'd like to open up maybe your own salon? Yes, I do. Okay. Anything else you want to do? Um, I want to go to film industry. Okay, so like do special effects? Yeah. Do you think you could fill the gap in my front two teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe give me some of that hair color? Yeah, good job. You could try. Yeah. I could try. I could try. Another future politician. <laughs> uh, she's a member of EWCTC's National Technical Honor Society and Skills USA. And in her free time, she enjoys soccer, horseback riding. You have something in common with Miss Abrisco, um, and drawing. Congratulations, Thank I have you. a certificate for you. Do you um, do you want to say anything to the board? <laughs> Does, the board have, uh, Does the board have any questions for Bonnie? Yeah, I'd like to know how parents get away with not having your hair braided. Because <laughs> I thought you you're know. assuming that I have gotten away without. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know you get to be the guinea pig. So. <laughs> The only question I have for you, and then, and then you're done and you can leave as I promised. How did you get interested in going to EWCTC? I wanted to pursue my artistic side of hair and color and stuff like that. Okay. And you knew that was out there for you? Yes. Good. Have you enjoyed your time at EWCTC? Obviously. I love it, yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right. Congratulations, Tony. Thank you. Um, our student services secretary, Mrs. Missy Mulhern. 
She has been with Greater Lake Hill for two years now in our department, and she had the opportunity this year to attend several conferences with Mrs. Brahoski, who's been a fabulous mentor to her. Uh, this conference that they attended last month was the Pennsylvania Association of Education Office Professionals. And this is a conference geared towards uh, mainly central office um, students, uh, central office uh, support staff across Pennsylvania. And we came across the award and nominated Missy for it, and she was selected out of numerous applicants to win the statewide award. Uh, it's a rather prestigious award. It's been around for uh, almost 40 years at this point and is very well known in the education office professionals world. Uh, a little bit about Missy and her role in student services. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with our department, uh, we love data and we love numbers. Um, so to summarize, say for work. <laughs> yes, yeah, and paperwork, um, which is what we're starting with. Missy is in charge of keeping track of more than 2,000 different types of student documents on an annual basis. Um, that includes our uh, more than 500 students who receive special education services, our students with 504 plans, and our students who are gifted. She also has to keep track of nearly 100 staff members with Gina and I, including all of the departments that encompass student services. Um, she has to work with uh, nearly two dozen out-of-district schools and placements in order to make sure that our students are taken care of. She manages a $3 million budget with us, and most importantly, keeps track of Gina and I on a daily basis. <laughs> so it is with great pleasure that I introduce Missy and congratulate her on this phenomenal award. So Lori told me, and I forgive me if I get this wrong, but Lori told me at the dinner presentation, they were, before they read the awardee's name, they were reading like the bio, the background, and all that kind of stuff. And Missy leaned over and was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I appreciate what you do for the district, and I'm happy to see uh, that you were recognized as such. And, and you certainly deserve it. Thank you. I'm, I'm very honored to work for the district. Um, for the past two years, it's, it's been great to work with um, the school student service team. Very thankful. They're very dedicated. Um, I've learned so much from Lori and, and Eugene and, and Kara Sanger also. Um, we work great as a team. They give great advice daily. Um, a lot of information that I've learned. So I'm very thankful for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, your enrollment reports attached, as always, um, just in comparison with kindergarten numbers. Uh, right now, we have 188 students registered for kindergarten for the 23-24 school year. Uh, last year, this time, we were sitting at 203. Uh, which is a difference of, of 15. Uh, if you recall last month, it was a difference of 20. So we are slowly closing that gap um, as we move closer to the start of the year. Um, if you have any questions about the enrollment report, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, most of these will be agenda items for next week. Uh, we will be approving the ECAP Academy MOU between GLSD and GLEA for the 23-24 school year. We will approve Western Pennsylvania School for the Deaf 2023 Summer Extended School Year Program. We will approve um, the Rally um, School 2 2023 Summer Extended School Year Program. We will approve Merrickie School and Extended School Year Program rates um, for 23-24. And approve the St. Francis University College and High School Cooperative Agreement for the summer school 24 school year. Um, we will approve the application for the Department of Education for the Flexible Instruction Days program for school year 23-24 and two subsequent years. Um, we will approve a memorandum of understanding between Greater Woodshire School District and Lincoln Your Valley Learning Center Incorporated um, operating the pre-K house program at Bagley Elementary School 
August 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Um, we will also be approving the summer educational grants for the teachers and um, the curriculum committee meeting minutes um, from the meeting on um, April 11th, 2023 are attached. Most of the things I talked about have attachments, so please read them if you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Lanes. Finance, Mr. Mr. Watson, I'm going to put you on the back burner for a second if you don't mind. Well, I know that your time is coming. So, I'm, I'm going to move on to do some of the other things to get those uh, uh, Mr. Watson's way. Uh, on the agenda for your approval will be a treasury report, the payment of bills to approve tax assessment of bill settlement, parcel number 61-17000176 and following ones also but uh, also to approve natural uh, gas procurement uh, administrative agreement uh, to approve the gifts grants and donations as listed also to appoint act 511 tax collectors for 23-24 school year uh, and to to uh, designate depositories for the 23-24 school year authorization to invest funds for the 23-24 uh, school year, reappointment school district treasurer through June 30th of 2024, and to approve uh, the real estate tax assessment appeals program, to approve the district tax rebate program, also to approve the general fund proposed final operating budget, and the final finance committee meeting minutes from April 18th are attached. And our next meeting will be June 13th at 5.30 the Senior High School Library. Mr. Watson, it is all the way. Mr. Watson, no pressure. But Officer Deere has been waiting for this presentation for an entire year. You know what? I just saw Dr. Bennett pop in, too. He looked like he was all excited. <laughs> he went to get the pop. Okay, that's it. So it's that time of year, um, and I always like to start by reminding everybody that, you know, just the timeline for all of this. The proposed final budget, uh, we have to adopt it by May 31st, okay? So what you adopt in May, you're still, it's going to, you know, we're going to bring the budget back to you in June, because the final budget is not due until June 30th, okay? Um, the other thing I just wanted to remind everybody, we didn't just start this budgeting process a month or so ago. Um, our finance committee has been meeting since November. We've been talking about budget pretty much every month since the month of November. So we've kind of drilled down into you know greater detail than what you're going to see tonight in many of these areas. Um, so let's get this started. <laughs> Mr. Hauser, we leave. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start by um, reviewing our proposed final revenue budget uh, with the group. So our local revenue projections are around $37.3 million. Local revenue makes up about 59% of our total operating revenue, okay? Um, we're looking at an increase of about $1.1 million, which is around 3%. Now, what makes up that increase, and, and I'm very happy, well, these next items, I'm very proud that this is, uh, you know, how our school district is being impacted. Our real estate tax collections are projected to increase by $348,000. Now this is based on a $2.5 million assessed, pro uh, assessed property value growth. Not every community has natural growth of that level. So I think that's a very positive statement and we're very fortunate to be in the, the situation where we're seeing that natural revenue growth, okay? Um, earned income tax collections projected to increase by 250000 It's based on trend as well as increased community earnings, okay? So residents within our community are obviously earning more money. Um, uh, this is driven by a percentage, so that money is then passed along to the school district. 
Real estate transfer tax collections are projected to increase by 152,000. It is also based on trend and, and the increase that we've had in property transfers, which is basically the you know purchase of properties. Houses have gone up for sale and they've been selling. I mean, they've been selling very, very quickly and they've been going higher than for what they were originally assessed for and, and we're a benefactor of that. Um, investment income is projected to increase by 159,000 and it's based on higher rates of return. I mentioned to the finance committee before I came over here, I'm seeing CD rates four to five percent. Um, this is the time of year where our, our revenue is very much depleted, but I'm hoping these rates will continue so that when we start to get our tax revenue in the months of August, September, and October, we can lock in uh, these investment rates for longer than you know three to six months. That's what I've been doing. I'd like to you know get them locked, locked in over a longer period of time and get a higher rate of return. Um, you know, historically, we were generating anywhere from five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars a year in, in interest. Uh, that dropped down as low as twenty-five thousand dollars at one point in time. So the fact that that's continuing to grow again is a really good sign for our school district. So that's the local revenue. So let's look at the state revenue projections. Um, state revenue, our total budget is around 23.6 million. State revenue makes up about 38% of our total revenue um, that is generated. Uh, we're looking at an increase of about 419,000, a little less than 420,000, which is 2%. Uh, the basic education subsidy is projected to increase by 477,000. So basically what I did is I adjusted the 23-24 um, projected basic aid subsidy to what the 24-23 actual allotment was. And then I included 25% of Governor Shapiro's proposed public education funding increase. Historically, we've got about 25% of what the governor's proposed. He normally comes out in the month of February, March, does his, his presentation, and you know, he shoots for the stars, and it doesn't always come to be. Um, but historically, we've trended about 25%. I will tell you, last year, we hit closer to 60%. So last year was a very good year. And my understanding is the state's in a pretty good position right now as well. So right now I've taken a little bit of conservative at 25%. I'm hoping to be able to adjust that um, prior to the June meeting. Um, in addition, our PISA's retirement subsidy is projected to decrease by $118,000. Um, so it has been years. Uh, this, this employer contribution rate years ago was around 1%. And it's steadily increased year after year after year. So the last 20 years, it's climbed and it's climbed and it's climbed up to 35.26%. Well, next year it's projected to go down to 34%. The state is required to reimburse 50% of whatever the retirement costs are. So you'll see later I'll highlight that, hey, our, our expenditure budget line item went down by 236000 Well, we're losing $118,000 in revenue, but it's still positive. It's a net gain. So, um, but that does have an impact on our state revenue. <coughs> Federal revenue projections around 2.5 million. It's about 3% of our total uh, operating revenue. We're looking at an increase of 336,000, 15%. Um, it assumes the use of 1.73 uh, million one-time non-recurring ESSER funding for student learning loss and additional classroom supports. Um, so. You know, again, I just want to stress that's one time non reoccurring revenue that eventually is going to go away. Later on in the slide, I'll, I'll note the importance of that particular, you know, use of funds, and, and we need to make sure that we're positioning ourselves properly for when those fundings go away. So, total revenue projection is $63.5 million. It's an increase of about $1.9 million or 3%. Okay? So, that's the revenue side. Let's look at the expenditure side. Okay, building and department budgets. Total $20.6 million. We're looking at an increase of about $2.1 million, which is about 11.5% increase. Um, EWCTC operating budget and the debt service uh, budget increased by $356,000. That's about $1 mil, okay? Over the last several years, we put, we put a significant dollar amount into the CTC. We recognize that the, uh, the, the important role that they play within our, our school community and with our, and our overall community. Um, they're putting out young men and women that, you know, into the workforce that we've identified as, you know, greatly needed, okay? But we fund a large portion of their budget. So over the last few years, we've, we've invested in them, and, but it has had a budgetary impact. Um, in addition, they did an over $6 million building renovation. Um, that's driven by market value. We're 50% of the market value, so we're, we're funding 50% of that project. 
Um, safety and security costs increased by two hundred eighty-two thousand dollars. You know, 0.8 mils right there. You know, we have school police right now, and I think that's adding a great benefit to our school community and to our overall community as well. Um, and then, in addition to that, we did a facilities master planning and visioning study. Okay, it resulted in a recommendation requiring some level of debt service funding increases. Right now, I have about five hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars built in, which is about one point five mils that is included in, in this in this budget. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on as we get into this. Um, salary and benefits make up $38.3 million. Um, it's, we're looking at an increase of about $57,000. Now, I can tell you that is not normal. You don't see that that often, and I can explain why. These two budget line items normally increase between $750,000 and $1.1 million, or around 2 to 3% annually. Remember, we're, 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 we're a service-oriented business. You know, we're, we're basically made up of, uh, of teachers and educators, and our, our job is to, to instruct. So, so a lot of our money is obviously going to be tied up in salary and benefits. But this year, we offered an early retirement incentive. We had 17 retirees take advantage of that. Now, it is our intent to replace all 17. But again, you're replacing 17 teachers that are at the top of the scale with 17 teachers at the start of the scale, or maybe closer to the start of this uh, beginning range. So there's a net savings there. And that's what's uh, causing this increase to be so much less than what it has trended at historically. Again, I won't spend a whole lot of time on this again, but Pisa's retirement, the rate went down. Um, so we're seeing a reduction of $236,000. Again, I know that we're also receiving, receiving a reduction in revenue of 118,000. So it's about a 118 uh, net impact. Um, so insurances, we have a budget line item of $5.6 million. Um, we're looking at an increase of $768,000, which is about 16%. We're seeing a 10% premium increase for our medical insurances. So we've been seeing a lot of uh, lower increases over the last several years, but our claims are, are, have continued to climb, so we needed to make an adjustment this year to get us caught back up. In addition to that 10%, while we're seeing a savings in salaries because we have uh, more experienced teachers who are retired and being replaced with newer teachers, we still, the, the, the way the language is written for that early retirement incentive is if you go early, we'll offer you health care for eight years or until age 65. So technically, we might have 17 additional <coughs> bodies that are still on our, our health care, which will cause our health care to go up. Overall, it's a net savings for the district, but it does impact on insurances. <coughs> So total expenditures come to 64.5 million. It's an increase of 2.9 million, around 4.75 percent. I always like to circle back a little bit further, dig a little bit deeper into our, our expenditures, and our major expenditures can be broken up into four categories. Four categories make up 84 percent of our operating costs. 68 percent go towards salary and benefits. Again, I mentioned you know we're a service-oriented business. Um, Seven percent. Uh, goes to debt service. You're going to hear me talk a little bit about the facilities master planning and visioning study. Currently, we have a budget line item of about 5%. Um, state average recommends you get to about 10%. So with that $520,000 increase, it will get us to 7%. So I think it will start heading down the correct path. And, and I always say this, you know, we have over $200 million of capital assets that we're responsible for taking, taking care of. And it's, it's, it's whether it's through building new or doing renovations, but that's something that we need to continue to plan for. Transportation makes up 5% of our operating costs. Plan operations makes up 4% of our operating costs. So let's start with the 68, which is the largest. Salary and benefits, again, it's projected to be $27 million. It's an increase of 251,000, which is roughly 1%. We have over 400 employees district-wide. Prior to the 11-12 school year, our average annual wage increase uh, for contract employees, it was around 3%. Since then, it's about 1.4%. So we've tried to be as fiscally responsible as we can with retirements and replacements and those sorts of things, and I think we'll continue to trend in that direction. Um, again, this particular year, though, it's lower than normal because of those 17 retirements, which I spoke about previously. Benefit, it's projected, benefit uh, projected budget is around $7.8 million. It's an increase of about 800,000 or 11.5%. I talked about the medical premium increase of 10%, and um, I've talked about the 17 retirees it basically increasing our, our covered lives. Um, 
Peace is retirement. It's about nine million dollars. I always find this, uh, so that's a decrease of 236, which I spoke about. But I find um, our, our employer registration rate went from 35.26 to 34 percent. But this is the one that I find interesting. You know, this one budget on the line item went from uh, two percent of our overall budget, which was around one million dollars. It's now up to about 14 percent of our overall budget, which is around nine million dollars. So. It has had a significant impact to our overall operations over the last you know, 15 years or so. And as a reminder, it's state law, there's no local control. This board can do whatever, you know, you, you can't do anything about it. You, you're required to provide that pension. Now, they've tweaked the pension benefit over the years. So individuals have been hired more recently. The benefit, I would say, maybe just isn't as rich. So there's, they, there's less that's being passed on to the actual um, taxpayers, uh, but it still is quite costly, okay? I just, oh, sorry, there it is, okay. Okay, debt service makes up 70% of our costs. Debt service uh, projected budget is around 4.4, and again, that includes that 500,000 uh, that I have built in there, which is 3 point, or 13.5 percent. Our current outstanding debt is around 23 and a half million dollars, and that's for the Lakeshore Elementary School construction project. So right now we have about 3.9 dollar, our 3.9 million dollars budgeted as our annual debt service payments, and we have about six more years left on that. Um, in November of 2021, the school board hired SHP to perform a facilities master's planning and visioning study. It took 15 months to do this study. Over that period of time, we had 16 meetings, and they were held with students, faculty, staff, school board, and community members. Uh, the result of the study was a recommendation for a district-wide capital improvement projects that total around $187 million. Okay? Uh, at the March 2023 board retreat, we modified that recommendation. We came up with two options that were presented to the board. Uh, one was to sort of take care of our existing without doing anything new, but just to take care of the existing uh, capital infrastructure and to do uh, up, you know, improvements to it, but not to basically add anything new. Um, each option though, that we presented it required additional millage to fund the increase in debt service that would be required to maintain or improve our over 200 million in district-wide capital assets. So right now with the $528,000 increase, um, it takes that from 5%, our debt service is now up to 7%. Transportation is 5% of our cost. If you provide transportation to one student, you've got to provide them for all. There has to be uh, a seat on the bus for every student. Uh, transportation projected budgets around 3.3 million. It's an increase of around 98,000 or three percent. Um, the budget includes the cost to transport regular education students, non-public students, special education students, and all extracurricular activities. Uh, the current five-year contract began July 1 of 2020. Uh, year one of the contract called for a 5.9 percent decrease. In years two through five, call for a 2.75% increase per year. Um, the additional 0.25% increase is the result of increased transportation costs due to out-of-district placements, and it equates to roughly $8,000. Plant operations, okay, it makes up about 4% of our costs. Um, the total budget's around $2.5 million. Uh, we're looking at an increase of slightly under a million dollars, which is a 60% increase, very significant. Uh, this budget covers repair and maintenance costs to maintain all of our buildings as well as all utility costs. We have over 200 million capital assets district wide. The majority of the increase is a result of increased utility costs for electricity. For example, we were paying about you know a little over four cents per kilowatt hour. Now we're paying uh, you know a little over 11 cents per kilowatt hour. That's 133 percent increase and probably impacts our budget between $600,000 and $750,000 a year. Natural gas went from $2.50 a decatherm to $4 a decatherm. That's 65% increase. Um, so that's, we're dealing with that right now as well. Uh, the remaining operations, so those uh, categories make up 84%, the remaining 16% fall into these categories. Uh, they total about $10.2 million. We're looking at an increase of 523, which is 5.5%. 
It's for instructional materials, supplies, books, instructional software, special education and student placements for life skills, hearing, vision, speech, speech, emotional support, autistic, learning, gifted, physical, multi-handicapped, technology um, for student and teacher classroom supports, uh, student supports like guidance, nursing, library, um, and tuition to the CTC, Simon Charter Schools and other LA placements. So let's look at our trends. Our 10-year actual expenditure revenue trends look like this. On average, our expenditures increased by about 1.375 million per year. Okay, in 2023, they're going up by 2.9. And I can explain why the difference. The difference is CTC operating costs, safety and security, and the facilities master planning and vision. They make up that difference. Um, if we assume no millage increase, local grants, or new federal grants, basically you look at your revenue, and you say, we're not increasing taxes, we're not getting any new grants, what does our natural growth look like? We generate about $860,000 more in uh, total revenues, okay? In 2023, we're generating about $1.9 million. We're having a good year from a local standpoint. We have local revenue growth, as well as increased state and federal funding. So that's why there's a difference there. But historically, over 10 years, we, look, we, we create an average shortfall of roughly $515,000 per year, which is 1.5 uh, mills. So what I try to communicate to the board is, you know, every year we've been kind of around that one mill. I went back and looked. Our average village increase over the last 10 years is 0.9 mills. And this supports that, right? This supports that. 2023-2024 um, projected shortfall of roughly uh, $1 million again. EWCTC, safety and security, and you can look at the uh, facilities master plan. Those are, that's really what's in there. I told you I'd circle back to the ESSER and the federal dollars, future budgetary concerns. This ESSER funding is one-time non-recurring revenue. It should not be <coughs> used to balance the budget. Uh, currently, we have $1.7 million included in the budget uh, for mental health services, student remediation, uh, replacement technology, teacher on assignments, building substitutes, tutoring services, and while all these funds will go away, while the funds will go away, many of these services may not go away, guys. So, you know, we have to continue to plan accordingly. So here's my recommendation. Approve, approve a proposed final budget in the amount of $64.5 million. Then our next steps continue to evaluate our operating expenditures and continue to review potential revenue funding sources, specifically uh, the anticipated level of state funding. So we're going to have more to come in June. Hopefully we'll have a little bit better news. Uh, but right now we have a bit of a shortfall. Or the, before I get to the next slide, are there any questions on this proposed budget? On the, on the uh, millage increase, yes. or average millage, millage increase, on, where do we fall in the surrounding areas? Yeah, so right now we currently have the third lowest millage in Westmoreland County. And one thing I shared with the Finance Committee <coughs> is that if you look at over 15 years, the average millage rate in Westmoreland County has gone up about 19 mills. And we've gone up about 15 mills. So from a taxing standpoint, I think we've been pretty, pretty responsible. Yeah. And how many school districts is that? 17. Right. So bottom three, I'm seven. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to So the other, only other thing that I wanted to touch base on, because this kind of ties to our, our budget, is I'm once again recommending that we participate in the Taxpayer Assistance Program. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically what we'll do is we'll mirror the state of Pennsylvania's property tax rebate program. Uh, so we have the same eligibility requirements as the program offered by the PA Department of Revenue, except, for, except it's only offered to uh, property owners. Your household income has to be less than $35,000. Uh, you have to be age 65 or older, a widow or a widower, age 50 or older, or age 18 or more and currently disabled. The rebate is 10% of the state amount. Currently, the state amount maximum is $650. So what we would give is $65. Um, and you would not exceed 100% of the property real estate tax. So we started off in this program two years ago. It we only offered it to 5%. We increased it to 10% last year, but I would recommend that we continue because it, it does help a handful of individuals within our community. Okay, so that is on the agenda for consideration. 
Okay. Anybody have any questions? go on to Skills USA for Pennsylvania um, and they competed in Hershey on April 12th through the 14th and from Gregor Latrobe we had a digital cinema production by Robert Phillips who received a second in the state. This is against every career technical center in the state of Pennsylvania. So he was second. We have Cora Dryley, Dryley, Dryley. Dryley. Um, who received a third for basic health care. And we have Chase Psycho, who received in precision machining a third place in the state. That's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very proud of our students and all of the WCTC students. We always do a nice show, um, but to be in the top three of all these areas is impossible. That completes my report. Mr. Hauser, our next um, joint operating meeting <coughs> will be Wednesday, May 24th, 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Closer. Technology, there is no report to see the superintendent's recommendation. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Next week, I'll ask the board to move on the resignations that are listed. And I would just note that uh, Ken Meyer is retiring from our maintenance department. He has 11 years with the district. Um, and the other note there is that we just had a resignation from a learning support teacher, so that will actually bump us to 18 positions that will need to be filled. I'll also ask the board to approve professional personnel with substitute teachers as listed, support personnel appointments classified as listed, and support personnel appointment supplemental a volunteer volleyball coach uh, listed there as well. In addition, I'll ask the board to approve the employee benefits and pay plans uh, effective July 1st, 2023. Uh, as you know, 
uh, those pay plans are uh, go into effect every for two years. So we do this every two years. And other business this Friday is the prom. That's an Act 80 day for teachers. Uh, students get stay home, get all pretty for the prom and all that kind of stuff. Okay? Um, yeah, the elementary students put a lot of effort. They, they're there to encourage, right? Um, Cheer and squad. Mrs. Kozar already, already mentioned EWCTC Senior Recognition Night. The Senior High School Awards Assembly is on Thursday, May the 25th at 8.20 in the morning. That's in the auditorium. The school walk, the 2023 school walk, will be on Friday, May 26th. No school on Memorial Day. That's the 29th. Uh, a note on the baccalaureate service scheduled for Wednesday, May 31st. That has been moved to the Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church. That's at 7 o'clock. The class of 2023 will graduate at Memorial Stadium on Thursday, June the 1st. Um, if you are coming to graduation, please let Mrs. Brahoski know so that we can get you seated appropriately. And if you need tickets for graduation, also please let Mrs. Brahoski know. Our last day of instruction and early dismissal is Thursday, June the 1st. And I would just remind the board that next week's meeting will not be on Tuesday. It will be on Wednesday the 17th at 7 p.m. Uh, here in the Center for Student Creativity. Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. President. And listed on your agenda is also the other meetings for uh, June, June 13th at 7 p.m. for the committee. The whole and regular board meeting will be Tuesday, June 20th at 7 p.m. Um, at this time, I'd like to thank everyone for coming this evening. Our meeting is now adjourned.